Alright, let's be real here. There is no way, no way, anything in this video will convince you to go nude. First of all, public nudity is illegal. Second of all, we're self-conscious. And third of all, we want to show off our drip and aesthetic. Despite all this, the essay we're going to be looking at actually makes arguments against wearing clothes. And I mean, look. The author, Michel de Montaigne, wore clothes, as far as I know. So this isn't some nudist manifesto or anything. Rather, I prefer to look at this essay as just a fun exercise in critical thinking. I know, somehow we're making nudity into something boring here. So Montaigne is going to give these pro-nudity arguments, we're going to look at them together, and we're going to critique them together. I apologize if I've disrespected any nudists out there watching this, but that's just how we're going to run this video. With that being said, let's undress these arguments. Get it? Cause undress like clothes? No, no, no! Hello and welcome to Philosophy Tunes, the channel recording from one of those nudist beaches somewhere in the world. So the essay we're looking at today is entitled On the Custom of Wearing Clothing by Michel de Montaigne. I'll put a link to his collection of essays below. So Montaigne starts off the essay by admitting his desire to break free of custom. Whichever way I want to go, I find myself obliged to break through some barrier of custom. So thoroughly has she blocked all our approaches. And let's be real here, we all want to consider ourselves as unique individuals that aren't imprisoned by the rules of society. And to some extent, it is good advice to live your life not completely subject to what society expects of you. In fact, it's kind of exciting to live that way. But there's obviously a line, right? Escaping the rat race or getting off of social media is one way to escape custom, which is generally pretty appreciated. But embracing cannibalism, that's kind of going a bit too far, don't you think? But what do you think? Where should we draw this line? But getting back on track, Montaigne then discusses how our use of clothing differs from other living things. It is truly unbelievable that we men alone should have been brought forth in a deficient and necessitous state. A state which can only be sustained by borrowings from other creatures. So if you look closely, there's two different points being made here. One, that humans are the only living things that use clothing. And two, this practice relies on other things to exist. We gotta use plants and animals to make clothing, essentially. So let's start with this first point. This is essentially a naturalistic fallacy, which is a fallacy that tries to say that if something is natural, then it must be good. An example of an argument that commits the naturalistic fallacy might be that because animals naturally don't use toilets, it is good not to use toilets. Hopefully that example alone shows the problem. Just because we're the only species to do something doesn't necessarily make it wrong. I mean, heck, animals don't watch YouTube videos and yet here you are. As for the second point about how other living things are used to make our clothing, there might be some appeal to that argument with vegetarians when it comes to animals, but even vegetarians and vegans eat plants. And from what I can tell, that's usually where clothing comes from now, cotton. I could be wrong, I'm not a clothing manufacturer or anything. All I know is that people aren't rocking the Davy Crockett drip anymore. Now although these two arguments don't work by themselves, Montaigne is going to use these two arguments to support a further argument. I therefore hold that just as plants, trees, animals, and all living things are naturally equipped with adequate protection from the rigor of the weather, so too were we. But like those who drown the light of day with artificial light, we have drowned our natural means with borrowed ones. So this argument seems to be more within the world of history and biology. Again, the naturalistic fallacy applies here, but also I think it's worth asking, what is natural and why is clothing considered unnatural? I think about how other animals have specific abilities that help them survive, like how the cuttlefish is able to blend in using camouflage to hide from predators. Why can't we consider our use of clothing to be like our own special ability? What's the difference between us using clothing to adapt to the weather and cuttlefish using its camouflage to adapt to predators? Montaigne also wants to offer the argument that if clothing was really required for humans, nature would make our bodies reflect that. If we had been endowed at birth with undergarments and trousers, there can be no doubt that nature would have armed those parts of us which remain exposed to the violence of the seasons with a thicker skin, as she has done for our fingertips and soles of our feet. You could again apply the naturalistic fallacy here, but also consider this comparative argument. 
Humans weren't meant to fly because they weren't naturally endowed with wings. Therefore, humans shouldn't take a plane. Sure, there are people out there that want to return to nature and return to our human roots. And while I too sometimes get that desire to live out in a cabin disconnected from society, we are using technology to connect right now, aren't we? There are some advantages to drifting away from our natural state, whatever that may mean. And finally, Montaigne's last argument here talks about how exposing ourselves to the weather without coverings actually makes us stronger. Plato enthusiastically advises that, for the health of our entire body, we should give no other covering to head or foot than what nature has put there. This seems to be an argument that's outside the field of philosophy and therefore I can't really comment much on. The only thing that comes to mind is how people dress differently when they visit from a place with a different climate. Like I remember going to Michigan for summer camp and wearing hoodies because it was so cold out there, even during summer. But the people from Michigan are so acclimated to that weather that they think I'm ridiculous with all my layers on. That's what I'm thinking about anyways. If you have more knowledge in regards to this argument, then let me know in the comments below. And that about does it for this essay. If you enjoyed this video, then like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.